Welcome to McDougall. On this edition, Dr. Hal Huggins suggests that your teeth may be making you sick. Hello, I'm Wayne Judd. And now, the man who'll teach you how to get in your doctor's face. Nicely, of course. Dr. John. I'm glad you added that nicely because we want to be nice with doctors. Well, sometimes I'm not so sure, John, as I listen well, to you talk. You know, the you medical seem... profession is very interested in the welfare of patients. Now, sometimes we've gotten a little misguided, but by and large, I think every doctor went to medical school for the same reason I did, and that's to help people. To help people. Help people. What, what sure. greater profession is there? Uh, and I know that it's the doctor's intentions when they do things such as happened to one of my patients a couple days ago. She told me that her doctor called her at night in the evening after they had a visit called her because she had refused to take hormone replacement therapy you know estrogens that women take around menopausal time okay. she just told the doctor I'm not gonna do it and left the office and he was so concerned he called her up and said you know you really have to do this you really have to rethink this so why did she decide she didn't want to do it well she thought the way she explained to me that menopause was a natural time in life and she was afraid of some of the things that she'd read about hormones and I think I think every woman ought to really seriously consider this issue and they shouldn't be forced into taking hormones. But doesn't that help a lot? I mean, isn't it something that makes it a whole lot better for women? There are some real advantages and that's the selling point. And I think the reason that doctors are so excited about getting women to take hormone replacement therapy is we finally have a pill that works. And it does work. It and somehow it seems unjust, doesn't it, for women to have to suffer through all of that? I mean, how much suffering have you done, John? Well, that's not the point. Okay. The point is they're suffering whether you take the pill or whether you don't take okay. the pill. And there is an actual way to deal with, uh, with both issues and not to suffer. But the, uh, the adverse effects, or let's talk about the benefits. The benefits of taking hormone replacement therapy are real. They're, you reduce the risk of hip fracture. In fact, you cut it in half. That's osteoporosis. Right. And you also reduce slightly the risk of dying of heart disease. And there's some issues of hot flashes that I know you were referring to and the, right. the, the change of life feelings that women get. And it does help with that. And those are, are good reasons to take it. But, you know, Wayne, even before we met, you knew that heart disease was not due to estrogen pill deficiency. You knew the heart disease was due to that fork and spoon that's that can't right. keep out of the that's eggs and right. bacon. So if you eat well, you can avoid heart disease. And, and if we get a chance to talk about it sometime, I'll explain to you in detail how osteoporosis is due to excess animal protein intake. And so armed with that, you can also avoid osteoporosis by eating well and exercising. So now you're left with the disadvantages that a woman has to weigh. Those okay. disadvantages are real. And they know about them. All right. It's a sad thing that a woman has to choose between hip fractures and breast cancer. Has to choose between... Wait a minute. What, what, what are you saying? What I'm saying is that taking estrogens, it's well recognized and well publicized that you double your risk of getting breast cancer when you take estrogen after menopause for six years. And also you increase your risk of uterine cancer five to 14 times above normal and you increase your risk of gallbladder disease 2.4 times above what it would be if you didn't take the estrogens. Do women know this? They do to some extent, but you know, they're, they're in a quandary. Like I say, the doctor's asking them to choose between different diseases. Should I be shot or should I be hung? And the yeah. poor patient doesn't know what to do. But if the patient would stop and think, Menopause is a natural thing. Menopause is something that we've been going through. That's for easy for a man to say. Excuse right. me, John. I've, I've been close to that phenomenon. And uh, you need to weigh the benefits stuff. and the risks. You okay. want to make sure that you've discussed both with your doctor before you take the decision. Don't be forced into taking a pill that you're not so sure about. In a okay. moment, we'll return with Dr. Hal Huggins, and we'll learn about something you can do with the metal in your mouth. Why should you watch Hello Channel? Because learning English should be inexpensive and learning English should be available to everyone. If you want a brighter future, join us and say hello. Have you ever worried about the uh, fillings that you have in your head? The fillings you have in your teeth. Would you worry if you knew that those fillings were made of mercury? and realize that mercury is a toxic metal? Well, if you're not worried yet, you will be after our guest tells you about mercury fillings. His book, It's All in Your Head, The Link Between Mercury Amalgams, which they call silver fillings, and illness. Dr. Hal Huggins, he's a doctor of dentistry, comes to us from Colorado Springs. You're passionate about this. You think that people really get disease 
because of the fillings of dentists, well-meaning dentists put in people's heads. Is that right? Yeah, how could this yes. be? <clears throat> well, it just so happens that uh, I've made an amazing discovery that mercury is a poison. Well, th th you're not original on that. I think well, they've I known that for a was, long time. But, yeah, <laughs> I was thinking about a Nobel Prize, but then I found out that Noah knew about it, too. Yeah, well, so he's around. ahead of me. So why would yeah. dentists do something that, um, if you stopped and thought about it, would, be, would see, seem to be toxic on the surface, at least? Well, because they've done it for 150 years. Yeah. Maybe so, we could hear a little more on just what that, you, you say there's mercury in these fillings. Maybe you could... Fill us in on that a little bit more. Fill you so in. to speak. Fill us in. No pun intended. None at all, of course. Yeah. Uh, the How do we get mercury out of all that? I, I mean, my head's full of this stuff, so I'm already frightened. This man frightens me Are enough, you now you. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even want to sit that close to him, do you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, breathe the other way. <laughs> uh, the silver filling is called silver filling because it's silver in color. Mm -hmm. The main ingredient is mercury, running around approximately 52%. And mm. then it's mixed with silver, copper, tin, and zinc, and mixed all together. Magically, it's supposed to stay together. Well, it doesn't stay together. There's no magic there. The mercury does come out. In fact, doing um, infrared photography, we took a spoon and just went bink on a tooth, and you could photograph the mercury vapor coming out of it. You can pick up the mercury vapor with an industrial meter. So there's quite a bit of mercury coming out. And then... You inhale, and guess where it goes? Mm. Into, into the, the lungs. lungs. From the lungs, I believe it can get directly into the bloodstream. You know it can. Yeah, and from the bloodstream, of course, there's a direct uh, communication right through uh, placental barriers, blood-brain barriers. There are no barriers to mercury, and mercury goes through a whole lot of different chemical reactions, so it can form any one of the three basic types of mm -hmm mercury compounds, the organic and the inorganic. And then it depends on your genetics from there on what you're going to get or if you're going to get something. But my main concern here is informed consent. I think if you're going to have a mercury filling put in your mouth, you should know it's mercury. Uh, Ten years ago, 95% of the physicians that I talked to were not aware that there was mercury in a filling. And they'd outright call me a liar say, well, dentistry may have done that 100 years ago, but there's no way they'd put mercury in you today. Well, they put in about a million of them today. What are they putting in these teenagers who are in our audience today? Mercury. They're still putting mercury in these handsome young people. Yeah. And you believe that putting mercury into a patient's body results in certain serious diseases. As a matter of fact, I have to say, your concern appeals to the most desperate people because they can't get help anyplace else. And so That's right. when you come out with a message that says that mercury can cause serious diseases like multiple sclerosis, chronic fatigue, leukemia, lupus, a lot of the incurable things. Uh, most of them are non-diagnosable. Uh, where do they come from? Nobody knows where MS comes from. Or, you know, when I was a kid, there was Lou Gehrig, and today there's Lou Gehrig's disease. Mm -hmm. uh, where did it come from? Well, we came out with a high copper amalgam about 20 years ago that uh, has about 30% copper in it, which makes the mercury come out 50 times faster. Mm -hmm. And it has a negative electrical current. And how far is it from the end of the tooth up to the brain? And you're putting some electricity there where the brain runs on seven to nine nanoamperes of current. The fillings contain uh, up to 100 microamps. So you're looking at like a thousand times more electricity Amazing. jumping up into the brain. This is, this is the whole battery idea. I mean, I've heard, yeah. heard people say that it's like you have a battery in your mouth because of all the different yeah. metals. By definition, that's two actually metals, true. Two metals and an electrolyte, saliva being electrolyte. Yes you got a battery. Well, you have five metals just with amalgam, 16 corrosion products, mm. put in braces, put in nickel crowns or something, and you've got, uh, t you can very easily in three appointments have 20 different metals in your mouth. So you really can get radio stations in your teeth. I thought that was a joke. <laughs> uh, that's true. The station picked up more often than anyone else at station WOR in New York City. But it's a crystal set. So it's a very simple thing. You know, people aren't going to tell you about it. Now, we go in and we ask people, and they all say, do you really hear radio in your teeth? And they don't <laughs> want anybody to know. You know, you might call a shrink in or something. But it's just a straight uh, biochemical phenomenon. No phenomenon yeah, to but it. Yeah. To bring it back to a serious level, you put people that through dental procedures, uh, remove the mercury, uh, and you see people get well. That's 5% of it. See, we have a multidiscipline center because to take a balloon and stick it with a pin, you can pop the balloon. That's easy. But to put the balloon back together is a little more difficult. So we have a staff that includes medicine and dentistry and chiropractic and acupressure and IVs, nutrition, saunas, Traeger, Feldenkrais. We have all kinds of folks together 
to put a patient back together because these are supposedly incurable diseases and we see positive responses in about 85 percent of them now. Otherwise you wouldn't keep doing it and otherwise people wouldn't come, keep coming to see you, would they? That's probably true. Yeah, it's the Huggins Diagnostic Center. We'll tell you how to get in touch with that. The book is it's all in your head, the link between mercury amalgams and illness, and uh, it's been stated that if, if dentists tried to put uh, mercury in people's teeth this, these days, the FDA would not approve it. Hal Huggins uh, will have more information after this break. Watch TV and learn English at the same time on Hello Channel. And welcome back. You may find this a bit controversial, the idea that mercury amalgams, things that your dentist may be putting in your head when you have tooth decay, is a potentially serious cause of health problems. But you know, this, this is something that's changing rapidly in the, in the dental profession. I mean, Dr. Hal Huggins is on the cutting edge, just like I am in the, in the medical business, on the cutting edge of dentistry, trying to inform people about the potential consequences of putting a known toxic metal in your head. And lots of dentists around the country are responding, are they not? Yes, it used to be that they were placing one million mercury fillings a day and now they're down to 400,000. Well, that's a big, so that's that's a big, big step. step. If you're not mm -hmm. gonna put mercury fillings in, I, I know you, you do it a little different at the Diagnostic Center in Colorado Springs, but yeah. what, is, what does a patient ask for when they go to the dentist? What do they say, I, I want? I don't want mercury fillings, I want gold? Well. Gold is okay. There are only 14% of the people whose immune systems react to that. So that's right. pretty safe. Compared right. to the plastic fillings, well, the plastic's what you would ask for, but there are about 60% of those that you would react to, 60% you'd react to, 60% I'd react to. They're not the same 60%. Hmm. So we do a blood test to determine what's safe for the individual patient. Well, how about porcelain? Uh, porcelain is what you fire on the outside of crowns for front teeth and that's aluminum and that's good for Alzheimer's and a few things like that. So this is bringing up the whole problem is we're going to have to relook at dentistry because dentistry has looked at what is the strongest material that will withstand heat and cold and chewing. These materials are all toxic and the toxicity has never been considered. You kind of sweep that under the rug. It's time to turn around because Alzheimer's and uh, all these new diseases, ALS, uh, well, taking an AIDS you patient, you take the mercury fillings out of an AIDS patient and their T subsets, their immune cells will double in seven days. Is this significant? Not unless you got AIDS. Yeah, or you're trying to take care of a patient with yeah. AIDS, nothing else works. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. you find uh, that a lot mm -hmm. of dentists, I mean this is a bandwagon, a lot of dentists are on, but, but you also have uh, some criticism with the way many dentists take out the fillings. It's not the way you do it at the Huggins Diagnostic Center in Colorado Springs. You, not, it's not done in the proper way. How, sh how should people find a dentist that does it right? Well, you can call our office and we'll try to f help you find somebody in your area. And we'll give you an 800 number uh, at the end of the show that they can okay. call. Uh, <clears throat> what is the proper technique for taking fillings out? Well, <clears throat> fillings, like we talked about, they're little batteries. All right, some of them, if you test them, have positive electrical charge. Some have negative electrical charge. Usually the more negative electrical charge, the more neurological diseases a person has. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's so simple, we won't bother to explain that one. You bet. I haven't figured it out yet, though. But if you take out the ones that have negative charge first, the patient responds. If you take out the positive charge, they don't respond. And the extent of that is like with Lou Gehrig's disease, with ALS, and with leukemia, we have to go in and take them out individually according to their electrical charge or the patient dies. You'll forgive me if I don't quite understand the science behind that. Well, I don't understand either, but the people but, who have the choice of living and dying really don't care. But you do. You, 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 you find this, this practice. We have seen it because people. we used to have 100% of the leukemics died. Now 100% of them have lived. I mean, that's not of any tremendous, we're not talking hundreds of people. Right. But when it's a difference of killing somebody and not, it's worth looking into. Now, what you, are, I'm sorry. Uh, what are the odds that um, this is a long shot, and I suppose you'll ridicule me for asking, but uh, dentists have had so many healthy patients since uh, fluoride and all of those things. Maybe this is just a ploy to uh, kind of uh, bolster the industry a little bit. Any chance of that? Well, they could use a little bit if they would go in and start taking out all the amalgams, then they'd really get bolstered a bit. They, that's my point. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. But see, the way dentistry is set up now, if a dentist tells the patient, oh my, you have mercury, you know, mercury is poisonous, there goes your license. Oh. So well, a dentist aren't going to be telling you to that. practice? Because I'm mean. <laughs> 
Well, I have had more patients over 21 years than probably all the people who are practicing this in the world put together. So I've got a voluminous amount of data. I have a large library system, and I took four years out of my life at age 50, practically, mm -hmm. to take a master's in immunology to try to find out what's really behind this in the immune system. So you support what you say. Yeah, it's kind of hard to... I have to tell you, I have not. You and I have talked about this right. for, a, you know, for several years, I, and I've heard about it from other dentists before, that I have not had my amalgams <clears throat> removed. Now, when one falls out, I have it replaced by plastic, but I'll tell you why I have it. Because when they get in there and start drilling around, mm -hmm. they're going to release a whole bunch of, uh, of, of uh, vapor of mercury that I'm yep. going to inhale. And mm -hmm. the second thing is I've got some pretty fragile teeth there, and I know they're going to take and ruin those teeth if they mm -hmm. take these amalgams out. And so I'm going to mm -hmm. take a perfectly functional tooth that may have a bit of mercury in it, and you're going to turn mm -hmm. it into a crown or worse. Mm -hmm. Well, well. You... Well, this isn't for everybody. Everybody doesn't have to have their fillings taken out. It's just for those who are interested in their health. No. I like that. <laughs> well, my response to that is that we finally found somebody who uh, is turning uh, tables on, on the doctor. John. Uh... Well, really, this is the point. You have the choice. When you went to the dentist and you got mercury put in. I didn't know. You didn't have a choice no there. But now you have a choice. As you're getting them replaced, you're not going to have mercury replaced, are you? Absolutely not. No, that's what I said. I would never it's do that. It's your choice. Yeah. And that's all I care about. Yeah. Now, if you happen to come down with some terminal disease tonight, my phone might ring in the morning. Uh, Hal, how rush much, out to your place. How much trouble is he really in here? I mean, can we talk about this a little bit? Well, let's see. Roll up your sleeve. Let's take you some mud here and find out. Because, you know, if symptoms don't show, that doesn't really mean a whole lot. But what if his white cell, do you know what your white cell count is this afternoon? No, I don't. No, I don't. How about you? So, do you know what yours is? Yeah, because it's always about the same. Oh, okay. Well, mine I've is done too. a few hundred <laughs> tests on mine. Uh, but, you know, if his white blood cell count suddenly went from uh, 5,000 up to 100,000. The importance is would the quality problem. of the show improve if I had my fillings taken out? Would what? The quality, the quality of the, of the show improve. Oh, there's if so, much, so the much change in the brain. We'll and be the right mind, back. It would have to be better. <laughs> Maybe it should be done on right. the show. <laughs> Learning a new language can be difficult and discouraging, but it doesn't have to be. Hello, I'm Karen, introducing Hello Channel, the revolutionary new channel designed especially to teach English. If you can speak English, the future is open for you, since speaking English means greater opportunity and higher paying jobs. By watching Hello Channel, you are immersed in this valuable language. You'll hear the words being spoken. You'll see the speaker's mouths when they say the words. You'll read what's being spoken in large, clear subtitles. And you'll speak out loud, practicing what you have just learned. There is no better or faster way to learn a language than total immersion. Hello Channel does exactly that. There's programming on every level so you can watch the shows that are just perfect for you. Whether you've spoken a little English, a great deal of English, or none at all, the Hello Channel has something for everyone. Join us for a convenient, affordable, and fun way to shape your future. There's so much in store for you if you'll just say hello. <laughs> It's uh, All in Your Head. It's the name of the book. Dr. Hal Huggins, he's a dentist. He practices in uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. We'll give you an 800 number at the end of the show. Uh, his uh, dental practice is a little different than most dental practices, but as a man who believes that he's doing tremendous good for patients, and his belief is based upon his experiences, and that certainly says a lot. And it makes no sense at all to have toxic metals put in your head. I, I, I can't imagine anybody arguing with that particular mm -hmm. issue. And one of the things that you shocked me with, Dr. Hal Huggins, is uh, the idea that stainless steel, which I considered a rather innocuous substance, mm. could cause allergic reactions. And you got me on a personal level. Mm -hmm. And that is with my son, my 11-year-old son. We'd had problems with his gums. They were hyperplastic. They started growing over his stainless steel braces. I, I called the dentist who happens to be a personal fan, I said, look, I think he's having allergic reactions to the stainless steel. He said, never happened. The kid just is not brushing mm -hmm. his, flossing his teeth enough. I said, no, I think this is an allergic reaction to the stainless steel. I said, I want him off. And so he took mm -hmm. the braces off, the child's gum straightened right out, and he comes back to me and he says, mm -hmm. 
Well, I went to a mm -hmm. medical meeting, a dental meeting. He says, I asked him, my fellow <laughs> dentist, and I guess you were right. It does yeah. happen. Stainless, stainless steel. Well, that's another word for nickel. I mean, yeah. nickel, cobalt, chromium, but nickel is the thing that's carcinogenic and does all these nasty things to you. And you know, I just happen to have some pictures here. Uh, when I went back to University of Colorado, see, what we have to do is measure to mm -hmm. prove what we're doing. All right, first thing that we did there was do all the lymphocyte studies, the fancy immune studies, right. on a patient before taking braces off. And we have two peaks, as you can see here. Second peak is way up here, is your T lymphocyte. This is a real healthy patient. That's fine. So within three days, we got some real weird behavior. We have big bruises forming on the thighs. This is putting the braces on now? Uh-huh. Okay. So within three days, we had a mess. So we did the test again. Here's the first peak. Where's the second peak? It's gone. The lymphocytes are gone. This These means, are white blood cells that help fight infection. Yeah, and this means that you got an immune system shutdown. Uh -huh. And you can real easy tell about that. The patient's dead. So we decided maybe we better take them out. Okay. So we took those out. And three months later, there was an improvement. You can see we've got some back here. but uh, So putting the braces in, even though you take them off, you've got a lot of metal still in the body. Then one of the other students in the class was doing DNA, the genetic mm -hmm. code. Yes. And, uh, of course, I can draw blood, and the other students couldn't. So I always had a lot of blood around there. And they said, can I borrow some of your lymphocytes? I said, yeah, sure. So they ran the DNAs. And what happened? We come out with two little peaks. And when you have two little peaks, that means one of them is natural, the other is malignant. Mm. So by putting on the braces, we had created a malignancy in the immune system. Mm. And serious. taking off the braces, you felt brought you back to one it peak? It did come back to one peak afterwards. Mm. But that was kind of, kind of a serious thing to do to a patient in you three days think to so. create a malignancy. Also, you, you feel, you know, and this is a hard one, because teenagers are so difficult to get along with as is, but you feel is the first thing to behavior go. is a problem. Related to the, yeah. to the braces. Yeah, and you talk to teachers, they say, well, yeah, we know as soon as the braces go on, their grade point average is going to go down one and a half points. Their behavior is going to turn into teenage behavior. No, that's just toxic behavior. From the metals. Don't blame the kid. And if I went into like your, your home concerned about all these toxic metals, what kind of pots and pans would I find? You would not find stainless steel. No. You would find... Aluminum. <laughs> no, I don't think you'd find aluminum either. 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 No. <laughs> no, you'd find the, what's the glass that doesn't break? Uh, Pyrex? Yeah, you'd find Pyrex mm -hmm. and Which, you'd find cast iron. Oh, that's good. Because we've tested all those things to find out what comes out of them. And that's, that's pretty safe. Yeah. How about braces? What do, you, what do you put on the braces? What do you put on instead? Because this is what we're facing right yeah. now with our son. They can make plastic brackets and they yeah. can make titanium wire. Because yes. titanium doesn't have the reactivity, doesn't have the electricity. But we're seeing a lot of cases of epilepsy, which, of course, you know, we see the cases. Everybody doesn't get it. You may only have 5% of the people who come down with the bad well, reactions. Dr. Hal Huggins, you are an iconoclast. You're changing med medicine in the, in the dental field. I'm sure you got a lot of people upset, but I also know you're making a lot of people happy in terms of better health. And we I mean, sure have. Who could be against yeah. taking toxic metals out of people's heads? Thank you, Dr. Hal Huggins. The name of the book is It's All in Your Head, The Link Between Mercury Amalgams and Illness. Until next time, stay healthy and happy. Goodbye. See you next time.